This is the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John, and he led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun. His clothes became dazzling white, and suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. And then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it's good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And while he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them. And from the cloud, a voice said, this is my son, the beloved. With him, I am well pleased. Listen to him. And when the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them and said, get up. Do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. And as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, tell no one about this vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. I invite you to be seated. A few years ago, we were preparing for our 40th anniversary at Abiding Presence, uh, and then COVID hit, and so we didn't get to celebrate our 40th. We're 43 right now. It's not the fun age to celebrate, right? Uh, we'll do another one on 45, I'm sure, but for the 40th, we did a lot of preparation, and we talked about that number 40 in the Bible, and you remember a couple of sermons about that or some Bible studies about the number 40, how it's the time of transition between living with God one way you're transformed throughout this time frame, and then you are walking with God in a new way after the 40-day journey or 40-year journey. Stories in the Bible like Noah with 40 days on the, on the water, uh, uh, Moses, 40 years in the Exodus. Um, and so it's all about this time of transformation. And today in our Old Testament lesson, we have another example of 40. It's also back then was a denotation of a long time would pass. So Moses is going up the mountain. He's got Joshua there. He's got Aaron. And he goes up on the mountain for six days. And he's up on the mountain. And all of a sudden, the mountaintop is on the seventh day, turns into like this fire, cloud, lights bursting everywhere. And Moses enters into this. And could you imagine what it must have been like to be on the ground looking up at this mountain that's on fire and see Moses just kind of walk right into this cloud. And you know He's going in to speak with the divine. Moses is going to talk with God. And so he goes into this mountain, and he's up there for how long? 40 days and 40 nights. Yes. Now, we know how the story turns out. He ends up being transformed by this experience. And when he finally comes down and the people accept the law that he brings with them, when he speaks to the people, his very face is transfigured. The light shines so bright that he has to wear a veil around him. A veil. So, does this sound familiar to anybody? Yeah. The gospel lesson we just had almost is the same telling of this. See, Matthew wanted the people that he was writing to, which were Jewish people, he wanted them to understand that Jesus is the Messiah. And he wanted them to understand this by using Moses. I always remember the alliteration, Matthew's about Moses, Luke is about law, Mark is short, and John's out there. But uh, <laughs> Matthew wanted to, to let the people see Jesus as this new Moses, or that he's the completion of what Moses began. And so a lot of the conversation, a lot of the storylines are related back to Moses, especially in the transfiguration. So here's this story of Jesus going up the mountain, and he himself has a couple of people going up with him, Peter, James, and John, and they're up there six days just like it was in the Old Testament lesson of the Exodus, I mean, of, of, of Mount Sinai. And, and while they're up there, all of a sudden, instead of the mountain turning into fire and flame, Jesus himself becomes bright, shining bright, like angelic white. And they're sitting there watching him. And if that's not enough to grab the reader's attention, to recognize something special is happening here, that this is the fulfillment of Scripture, all of a sudden there's this vision of Moses and Elijah with Jesus shining white. And I can't help it, but every time I think of this vision, I always think of Return of the Jedi with the three Jedis balanced in the background. It's just so beautiful. So Peter is looking up at these three people, the fulfillment of Scripture, Moses, the giver of the law that saved the people from slavery, is now giving a nod to Jesus. 
You were going to fulfill the law. Elijah, the prophet, the great prophet that, was, that resurrected people, that was taken up in a whirlwind into the clouds. Elijah giving a nod. You're going to fulfill the prophets. Jesus in the middle, glowing like the fire of flame on the mountain is the fulfillment of all the laws and the prophets. And Peter says, we've got to build some houses right here for you and for Moses and Elijah because this is amazing. We can't pass this up. We've got to commemorate this somehow, some way. Let's build some houses. And no sooner does he finish saying that, that a cloud overtakes them, just like on Mount Sinai. And now there's this booming voice. This is my beloved with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. And just like those Israelites down on the bottom staring up at this sight, scared to death, Peter, James, and John are fearful, and they drop down to the ground, and they feel their Messiah, this established one, touch them, and they look up, and nobody's there except for Jesus. Sky is blue. It's calm. And he says, do not be afraid. And then they go down the mountain. This is an amazing telling. These two things are just so similar to each other. Moses on the mountain, Jesus with, with the disciples. And the thing is, is that um, I want to point out, talk about two things uh, about them being up on the mountain with Peter and, and him building these houses and also the booming voice that we heard because they kind of relate to, to the whole thing. Peter, James, and John were, were disciples that were Jewish and what they knew to do would be to commemorate things because that's what their ancestors would do. They had all kinds of festivals, the festival of the week, the festival of the booth, the festival of Passover, lesser festivals, greater festivals. They would commemorate anything and everything because they would tell the story of what their ancestors went through. It was a shared story. It was their story. They would feel what their ancestors had gone through, and so they would hold these festivals. Days would go by, and so they'd build these tents, these houses to stay in them. And so Peter, in his mind, is like, we're starting a new one right now. Let's build the houses. We'll come back here. We're going to revisit this. We're going to be able to come back and feel this amazing euphoric feeling that we have. And of course, Jesus is like, no, we can't stay here. We can't stay on this mountaintop experience. We have to go back down the mountain. There's more to do. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. The booming voice of Jesus, the booming voice of God that we hear in our scripture today. Um, uh, he says, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Have we heard that anywhere before? Where else do we hear it? Baptism, baptism of Jesus. In the gospel of Matthew Almost word for word, it says, this is my beloved, listen, this is my beloved with whom I am well pleased. The only difference is now God saying, listen to him. I always think it's kind of funny because I think maybe God should have done that at the beginning uh, because they weren't apparently somehow, some way, but now he's like, okay, fine, listen to him. Uh, but what happens at Jesus' baptism? He's baptized, the, the clouds open, the, the voice comes, and then he's thrust out into the wilderness to be tempted for how long? 40 days. And he is transformed during that time and begins his ministry. And now all of a sudden we have Jesus up on this mountain, transfigured, changed, in front of them immediately. And now they're going down the mountain and they're headed toward Jerusalem and they're headed toward the cross and they're headed toward the crucifixion and the resurrection. And God says, listen to him. And Jesus says, don't be afraid. The thing is, it's, it's kind of like, it's real easy to, um, to want to, to want to live in the past, to, to want to hold on to the nostalgia. Like, I, I think it's kind of like when you're sitting in grandpa's lap and you have the old photo album out and you're flipping through it and you're looking at pictures and grandpa's telling you what it was like back in aught eight, you know, what, what, what he was like then and stuff as a child. And, and it would be amazing to be able to go back to those times, back to those places and live in that space, but we can't stay there. We also can't go back to past fears, past problems past experiences that were just absolutely devastating. We can't stay in that spot. We also aren't able to live in future hypothetical situations that haven't even happened yet. Jesus is saying, you're right here, right now. Be in this moment and don't be afraid. We're going to go down this mountain, but we're going to do this together. I am with you. Do not be afraid. Let's take the first step together. And we take it together, and Jesus says, are you good? Let's take the next step. I am with you. Do not be afraid. And they go down the mountain to start doing their ministry. 
We're about to go down the mountain ourselves into the season of Lent, which is our own 40-day journey. We've just been on the apex of this story. We've just witnessed the establishment of Jesus, the Messiah, on top of this mountain with Moses and Elijah saying, this is him, this is the guy, let's listen to him and let's find out what happens as he goes down and he starts to go down this mountain to do the ministry of God. Now, the cool thing about this whole story is that when Moses comes down the mountain, what does he bring with him? The Ten Commandments, right? And last, a couple weeks ago, I talked about this, that the Ten Commandments are about relationships, our relationships with God and our relationships with each other. Jesus is coming down the mountain. He's going to show us how to live in these relationships through his actions, through his words, through his deeds. He's going to touch people that others don't want to touch. He's going to heal people that are seemingly unhealable. He's going to love people that are clearly unlovable. He's going to sacrifice his life in service to others and calls us to do the same thing. And it's scary to think about where we might be. But Jesus says, be right in this moment. Do not be afraid. I am with you. Let's take the next step together. And as we go into our 40-day journey, we know on the other end of it, we're going to be different. We will be transformed during this whole season of, of Lent as we walk into it. And I invite you to walk with God, to not be afraid of it. To, when you feel overwhelmed by doubt or overcome by fear or overshadowed by anxiety, be not afraid. You are not alone in those moments. It's almost as if God's saying, just plant your feet in this moment, in this place, and we're going to walk this journey together, one step at a time, one day at a time, do not be afraid. And the beautiful thing is that as we go through this journey, not only are we transformed, if we walk with Christ as Christ does down that mountain, we can transform the lives of others. What an amazing gift for us to be able to give, not only to our community, but to this world. In fact, we're almost giving glory to God, which calls for us to say the beautiful word of the day. Hallelujah. Amen.